Hi everyone, I'm Patrick and in today's video I show you all Python libraries I use for machine learning, deep learning and data science. Now this list is not exhaustive, there are of course other great libraries available, but it covers I would say 95% of the libraries I use. So if you can recommend any other ones then let us know and comment below. So I split the libraries roughly into these categories. The base libraries you almost always need, plus some optional helpful additions. Then the deep learning frameworks, frameworks for computer vision and NLP, and frameworks for web development, so if you want to deploy your applications. So if you want to have this tutorial in written format, you can head over to my Hashnode blog, where I publish this as an article. And Hashnode also happens to be the sponsor of this video, which is really great. Hashnode is a free developer blogging platform that allows you to publish articles immediately. With just a few simple steps, you can set up a high performance, secure and fully optimized blog that delights your readers. You can blog on a Hashnode sub domain or even better you can set up your blog on your own domain again completely for free you will also have content ownership this means no annoying ads no pop-ups and no paywall but the best part in my opinion is the global developer community around hashnode you can connect with other hashnode community members and they are able to discover your articles on their feed this means that even without a large audience your articles can be found and your blog can get a lot of traffic right from the start so what are you waiting for start your hashnode blog for free right now the link is in the description below the number one library, which is also the base for many other libraries, is of course NumPy. With NumPy you can do matrix operations and linear algebra much much faster than with Python lists. Then we have Pandas, the Python data analysis library. It's a powerful tool to load your data into data frames, which essentially are tables that you can then easily modify, analyze and visualize. Pandas also has functions to plot the data, but this is just referencing matplotlib. So matplotlib is the base library you have to know to plot and visualize your data. With matplotlib you can create all kinds of plots like line plots, bar plots, pie plots and many other ones. This is essential to understand and analyze your data. Now the base library for machine learning in Python is scikit-learn. This offers almost all the classical machine learning algorithms that you can use for regression, classification, clustering and dimensionality reduction. And it also offers algorithms to pre-process your data and to do for example feature extraction or feature normalization. So these are the four base libraries you need which I also call the machine learning tech stack. So if you're serious about ML or data science, then you should definitely get experience with them. Now let me show you three more optional libraries that could be helpful. The first one is Seaborn, which is also a visualization library and extends matplotlib. So it offers some more plotting functions and Seaborn graphs often look a little bit more beautiful than matplotlib graphs. Then we have XGBoost. XGBoost is an optimized distributed gradient boosting library that implements highly efficient parallel tree boosting algorithms such as the gradient boosting decision trees. They typically perform really well and can be for example often seen on Kaggle challenges. So definitely give this a shot if you need a powerful and efficient model. And then there is Imbalanced Learn. This is a super helpful library when you have to deal with an imbalanced data set. For example, if you have a lot of samples of the negative class, but not so many of the positive class. So you should definitely address this problem in your code and Imbalanced Learn offers a lot of ways to do this. For example, it has different algorithms to do oversampling or undersampling. Now let's have a look at what you need for deep learning and when working with neural networks. So for this you should pick one of the two popular deep learning frameworks TensorFlow or PyTorch. Now I'm not going into the argument which one is the better one. This might be a topic for a different video so if you're interested in this let me know. I can just say right now that both are awesome and can get the job done. So just pick one in the beginning and try to get some experience with it. So these libraries build the base for any deep learning task. But now let's have a look at two specific fields, computer vision and NLP and which libraries can be helpful for those. So for computer vision, the number one library you need is OpenCV. 
This offers powerful algorithms for real-time image and video processing. Some techniques could be useful for pre-processing or labeling the data and then combine it with PyTorch or TensorFlow. But it also has powerful algorithms for complete pipelines. For example, you can do object detection, object segmentation and face recognition with it. Then there is also Pillow, the Python imaging library. This also offers image processing algorithms and is a little bit more lightweight. So I mainly use it to load and convert images and also for some image displaying and drawing tasks. For NLP I mainly use three libraries. The first one is the Hugging Face Transformers library. This offers many pre-trained state-of-the-art natural language processing models that can then be combined directly with PyTorch or TensorFlow. I think it's the most popular NLP framework in Python right now and if you want to learn more about this then I have a crash course for you here. Then there is also NLTK, the Natural Language Toolkit. This is also essential when working with language data. It offers many algorithms for text classification, tokenization, stemming, tagging and many other text processing techniques. And the last NLP library I use is Spacey. Spacey also offers a lot of powerful NLP algorithms and is designed to build production ready systems really fast. They have a really great free course on their website, the Spacey 101. So if you want to get started with it, I can definitely recommend to check this out. For deployment in the web, I want to be able to build APIs really fast. So for this, I use either Flask or Fast API. So you might be asking, why not Django? Django is awesome and I would definitely use this for full-blown web apps. But if I just want to be able to quickly build APIs with just a few endpoints, then Flask or Fast API are the better choice. So Flask is more established and very beginner friendly. So if you don't have much experience with web apps, then I would recommend to use Flask. Fast API, on the other hand, is pretty new, but it's getting more and more popular. It's one of the fastest Python frameworks out there right now, and it has a lot of great features that allows for rapid production-ready API development. So if you have a little bit more experience, then definitely give this a shot. And now the last framework I use for web development is Streamlit. Streamlit makes it extremely easy to build beautiful web applications. So I already have some tutorials on my channel that you can check out. So with Streamlit, you don't have to worry about implementing the UI yourself. You get beautiful widgets right out of the box. For example, you can add buttons, sliders or graphs with only one line of code. So I use this a lot when I quickly want to build an app with a nice UI and I want to demonstrate my machine learning models. All right, that's it. This list covers 95% of the libraries I use. I hope you found this helpful. And as I said, there are of course other great libraries available. So you can comment below and add some more. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next video then. Bye.